The key roles of the practitioners working with the children is that role of observation and that really close detail of what actually happens then and what the children do and why they do what they do. And that can be recorded in a number of ways. Through the observations and assessment, we find where there may be things missing or things that we can improve on so that we're meeting the needs of the children at all times. The observation's great to move individuals on, but they can also be used to move the whole sitting on. Some of the children have copied my numbers, so I've been writing about that. And, you know, who's been able to write the numbers and what they, if they can recognise the numbers they've written. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. We've got, obviously, a lot of language comes out of it, so anything that they say that might be creative, I'm writing that down as well to show how they're communicating with each other and what language they have, you know, to, to develop their imagination. Yes. What are you going to do now? Have a picnic. Have a picnic on the moon, like the bear in whatever next. When we first set up a role play area, often the children don't really know how to use it. So initially, we try and go in and sort of support their play and extend them and ask questions. And then once they sort of they're using the area independently, then we'll step back and we'll observe. We'll find out what they're doing and what they're saying. How are you doing? Through play, the children are more confident in what they're doing and they're, they're happy to talk and they're not scared of getting it wrong. They don't have any sort of preconditioned ideas as to what they have to say. It's just natural and it comes from within. So anything that they know about numbers or the way they develop and talk to each other, we can sort of see in a natural environment rather than being asked a question. And the evidence that we use to support um, that assessment can be photographic, it can be parents' input, it can be written observations. So lots of different ways of assessing the children are all put together to form a wide picture of that whole child. At the Hall Day Nursery, they've organised information gathering for every child, some of it spontaneous, some of it planned and extended. We talk to parents on a regular basis about what the children are interested in. Once we've found out what the children are interested in at home, each child has a key practitioner, and the key practitioner plans on a weekly basis for the, each individual child, based on what the parents have, have told us. We also do a series of observations. We do snapshot observations throughout the day, um, which are collated at the end of the week, and all that is put together in order to plan for the child's next steps. Where are you going on your holiday then? The key roles of the practitioners working with the children is that role of observation and that really close detail of what actually happens then and what the children do and why they do what they do. And that can be recorded in a number of ways. You may see staff in the, making quick notes on a post-it note or making notes in a notebook. Something we've also always had in place is using photographs to record um, that, that visual element of children's learning. But more recently, we've really wanted to look at developing the use of video to record sequences of children's activities and learning. Um, and, and that's been a big part of the work we've done over the last year. The video is just really valuable in many ways um, for collecting the language and the interactions that the children are using, particularly between each other, um, and not having to paraphrase the things that they're saying if I was writing it down. Um, and you can capture just the noises and the gestures and the body language that these young children are using throughout all the play, so it's really valuable. <laughs> Jack's one of your key children. How do you think he's settling in? Have you managed to do his narrative observation yet? Um, yes, I have done a narrative observation of him yesterday. I think generally, you know, he, he comes in and he's quite attached to Mum still. Mm. He doesn't want her to go. Um, but he's, he's 
beginning to manage that transition, you know, a bit mm. better in the sense that he won't scream, you know, I want my mm. mummy, I want my mummy, mm. like he was mm. doing, That's you know, true. last week. Yes. Yes. And that you, you can sort of console him and try and distract him with other things. Uh, you've got to go. At Clapham Manor, Julia and Tammy are looking over Jack's first assessment just a week after he started with them. They've talked with his parents too and are combining all they've found out to monitor his progress. Their plans for Jack make sure that new experiences, routines and interactions support his next steps. He was using lots of shiny materials to make mm. a picture and he was quite confident in selecting his own materials, you know, so he selected some string and some thread and some paper. And then he said to me, I want the, I want the paint, and he pointed up at the shelf. So I, said, I showed him that he could go up and get yeah. it himself, so he That's independently great. went over and he climbed up, he selected his paint, he squirted some on and he said, oh, I'm going to paint it now, I'm going to do it now. So he painted it on. I've assessed that and I've put, um, <coughs> for creative development, yeah, um, for their being creative strand, um, that he's able to talk about his personal intentions yeah. and, and describe what he was trying to do. Once we've done an observation, we will highlight it on our tracking form. And then at the end of each term, I look at that child's grid and I make a judgment as to what band they're working on. And it's very clear to see any strands that we have got a weakness and either haven't been covered. Should we look at um, creative development? Or it's actually the whole cohort is finding it difficult. Leaders and managers need to keep an overview, stepping back from the day to day every so often to review how all the children are developing. This cohort of children has been very interesting. We've got a very large group of boys and I really had to think hard about how I was going to resource that. These young boys will not be wanting to sit down at a table, they will be wanting to stand up. So I removed the tables, um, brought back sand and water inside, and then still realising they need opportunities to make marks. And there are, you know, a few girls, so they still need to have provision. And we've also tried to choose topics that will engage boys' learning. So, for example, we're doing space at the moment and then we're going to be moving into dinosaurs and volcanoes and then going into traditional tales. Information about children only helps learning if it's used day to day. Talking with mum, practitioners found out that Elise doesn't understand her colours, emptying the dishwashers a chance for her to practise. Today she emptied the dishwasher and when Louise asked her what she'd done, she said she emptied the cups. And when we asked her what colour they were, she said red and blue. What colour were the cups? Uh, red and red. Red and? Blue. Red and That's blue. Right. Good Clever girl. girl. Which was very good for Elise because usually everything's red and the cups were red and blue. So I've written out an observation for her and I'll use that information and it will go in her file towards her assessment. Yeah. Is it? Daddy. Daddy. On parents' evening, I talked to her mum and dad and we talked about her colours and, and her mum said she'd noticed that everything was red. So today, for her to get it actually right is a big thing, actually, and I was really, really pleased for her. Ongoing observations generate a substantial amount of assessment evidence day by day. Reflecting on what's important to keep is essential. For the videos, summarising involves editing. Right. Or if you want it to slide one over the top of the other. Like that. Yeah, and you see why it's put that cross in there. Mm -hmm. If you play it from the Jay has showed us how to edit those down and put together the most valuable bits into a sequence just to document the key learning that's taking place. Drag that one over as well. Yeah. Every so often, settings share the tracking information they're keeping with parents. Today, Leon's come in to discuss son Isaac's progress with their key person. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Leon, I thought we'd have a look at Isaac's learning journey this afternoon. 
We have open weeks when families come in and we share information because they, they post the observations, the videos, all our analysis, it all comes together. So there'll be films in there, there'll be questions that we want to ask, really. There's our just what the children have been saying, how they've been interacting, what their well-being, what their involvement is like. And um, so we share that with families. So I know that you're a keen cook as well, have you? Yeah. So <laughs> that's a perfect opportunity yes. to sort of help develop language skills. We can offer support for next steps with families as well. We can say, have you noticed this at home? Um, we've noticed this in the setting. Have you tried this at home? We're trying this. What have you tried? Have you got any ideas for us? So it's a real sharing opportunity, but it's all, a lot of it is all about that communication. When assessment information is organised in a systematic way, it helps staff to ask the right questions about each of the children. How are they developing? What are they good at? And where do they need support? What we have done is put staff into smaller groups, what we call an analysis time, and we were very clear on calling it analysis time because that's what we wanted to achieve. I think in the past we've very much gone straight from an observation into a planning process where what we really wanted to look is, is what that really meant, reflect on that as practitioners and what the children were learning and really have some detailed time to look at that and that's been really successful. Sliding down the hill. We collect data using Lutheran skills of well-being and involvement and we collect those alongside looking at the ages and stages of development the children are engaged with and it's all that together that gives us those pictures of the whole child but also then gives us those patterns across the whole setting about what's happening and what we need to make those more strategic decisions about. In itself, assessment information can't support progress. It's analysis that enables Jess to answer questions she has about her key children. At the hall, they use a system called the PLOD, possible lines of development, to organise their thoughts. It's important that each key practitioner does have time away from the children where they can sit and they can actually plan the next steps for each individual child. Hi, Jess. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. We've done an observation on Oliver this afternoon. Yeah, I have. Communication and language we're going to focus on. I've had a word with his parents and, you know, they've been trying at home, encouraging him at home with his mm -hmm. language, so they've asked us to work with him. Through all the observations and assessment we find where there may be things missing or things that we can improve on um, and through that we work as a team in each room to meet the needs of the practitioners and the children. It's about putting that all together to give that view of the centre and how all the children are performing as a group and as one does what happens one year, does that happen another year and how then between one year and next year when we have had different interventions and different focuses for training, is that really making a difference to children because that's what the bottom line is, it's got to make a difference to children.